Environmental Protection Agency. Um, Kevin is the manager there at IEPA and their Office of Pollution Prevention. Um, thank you. I'm Kevin Green. and I'm with Illinois IEPA's uh, Pollution Prevention Program. And I want to talk a little bit about one of our flagship technical assistance programs. It's Illinois IEPA's Pollution Prevention Engineering Intern Show Program. And I'm going to provide a little background information about the program, describe its major components, and highlight some of the projects at uh, private and public sector facilities, and then share some of the lessons we've learned from the program. The program was created in 1989, and it, it's interesting. Uh, it, it resulted from some discussions between Illinois EPA and the State Chamber of Commerce at the time. Uh, both groups are trying to look, at a, look for ways to improve our, uh, the relationship between IEPA and the business community. Uh, we were also interested in trying to provide a non-regulatory approach to helping uh, companies improve their environmental uh, performance and reduce their environmental impacts. And we were trying to uh, find ways to encourage more uh, environmental innovation and leadership type projects in the, uh, the private sector. Uh, the, the purpose of the program is to help uh, uh, facilities reduce their environmental impacts and also to provide a practical work uh, experience for uh, college students, uh, particularly engineering students and chemistry students. Uh, the focus is on uh, trying to avoid the generation of waste and emissions, uh, decrease the use of toxic substances, and also help facilities use materials, water, equipment, and energy more efficiently. The key components uh, of the program include, basically we're trying to place between 15 to 20 engineering students uh, in the field uh, each year, primarily in the manufacturing sector. Uh, we recruit students from the public and private universities in the state. They have to be uh, a junior or senior undergrad or a graduate level college student. In, in the early days, we were recruiting uh, primarily graduate students, but about 10 years ago, we opened it up to uh, undergrads so that we could begin recruiting uh, students uh, from the University of Illinois uh, system. We were having a hard time getting graduate students. We decided to open it up, and now most of our students are primarily undergrad. Um, we train the students. We bring them to Springfield for a week, and we train them on a number of things, energy efficiency, waste auditing, process mapping, and, and other quality improvement techniques. Uh, on the last day of the training, we'll take them out to an industrial facility where they get to practice what they learn. They basically do a waste audit, and we'll have them make a presentation to the facility, uh, environmental health and safety people at the end of the, uh, the, end of the day. Uh, they work for 12 weeks in the summer, and that includes 11 weeks in the field, one week of training. The salary is about $2,700 a month. And depending on our funding availability, we'll pay for the student in, uh, salary or we'll negotiate a cost-sharing agreement with the host facility. What are the benefits uh, for the host facility? Uh, it, you know, for, especially for a medium-sized facility or a small facility, they're getting a technical resource at a relatively modest cost. The student can provide a, a fresh perspective with a real strong focus on process improvement. Uh, again, uh, the benefit here is to reduce your waste emissions, avoid environmental liabilities, maybe even streamline some of the uh, requirements that they face from the IEPA or avoid some of those permitting requirements. And then we always want the student to focus on uh, projects where there's going to be a cost savings uh, uh, to the facility. Benefits for the student are to get some real hands-on experience working in the manufacturing uh, or other workplace sector, uh, opportunity to make a real uh, difference in the field, uh, they'll, they'll acquire some project management skills. Uh, it's a great opportunity to improve their communication and presentation skills. We have them do a presentation at the beginning of the internship program, and at the end of the program, we'll have them also do a presentation. We'll invite the facilities and others to come in and hear about the, the, the results of their projects. Uh, they'll obviously get an opportunity to earn a salary, which is a good thing during the summer, and it gives them an opportunity to build their resume and their professional contacts. Uh, if we've, we've had students from just about any school here in the, in the state that has an engineering department or a chemistry department, that's a list of all the schools that have contributed students to the project over the last 24 years. 
What's our role on the project? Uh, we'll review, uh, recruit, and interview the students. We'll review the facility uh, proposals, project proposals. We'll match the interns with the host facilities. We, you know, we try to, we used to provide a, a stipend if, we, if they're going to relocate, but we try to have the students located at the facility where they plan to be during the summer months. We'll, um, we'll establish the contracts with the students. We'll train them on the P2 techni technologies and practices. We'll do the initial on-site visit with the student, and we'll do a, a midterm visit uh, to see how they're doing. We ask the students to give us a bi-weekly progress report, and we'll also consult with a facility supervisor. Um, and we also provide technical support uh, for the student uh, during the project, and we also will uh, publicize the project results. What's the intern responsibilities? They have to attend a one-week training uh, class in Springfield. They have to adhere to a work schedule. Typically, it's going to be a 40-hour work week. We have to follow the company policies and procedures, uh, things on safety, personal protection, confidentiality is very important. Uh, they have to work with the uh, management and staff. They have to give us a bi-weekly report, which are going to be reviewed uh, by the facility before it's submitted to IEPA. Uh, they present their project results at a half-day seminar at the end of the uh, intern uh, program, and then they'll deliver us uh, a final report at the end of the project as well. Uh, what we expect from the facilities, we want a well-defined project or projects, uh, student supervision, workspace, safety training, um, employee cooperation, which is really critical, uh, workers' comp, compensation, and then uh, we may require uh, them to pay for the student or, or a portion of the student fee uh, where appropriate and other miscellaneous expenses. Here's a sampling of facilities that participate in the program uh, since its inception. Uh, you'll see we have some Fortune 500 companies, good number of uh, medium-sized manufacturers, uh, We've had uh, agricultural facilities uh, in the program, railroads and others. Uh, from the government side, we've had them at uh, local government facilities, particularly at wastewater treatment facilities or public works departments. We've had them at the Rock Island Arsenal uh, four or five times, and we've had them at several correctional facilities around the state. And we've also, in recent years, we've, uh, we've been placing them at community colleges, universities. Uh, we've had them at hospitals and, and public school districts. I'd say typically each year, 80% of the projects are at, in the manufacturing sector. What type of projects have they worked on? Um, in recent years, there's been a lot of focus on energy uh, uh, efficiency projects, so lighting, motor upgrades, air compressor usage. We have some equipment they can use to go in to look for leaks and to tag leaks. Uh, process efficiency, material substitution, waste segregation, in, improved inventory control. Uh, looking at laboratory chemicals and solvents, and we've even had them working on some sustainable, sustainable planning, sustainability planning, and environmental management systems. Um, here's a sampling of some of the projects that they've worked on. I'll get into a little bit more detail in a minute, but as you can see, we've had them work on some material substitution projects, improved housekeeping, process improvements, um, and so on. Um, and some uh, improved inventory control pr uh, projects as well. I want to get into a little bit more detail uh, looking at some projects. Uh, typically, the intern can work on three to five projects over an 11-week period. I'm always impressed every year by how much work they can get done. Um, and here in this case, this was at the Shawnee Correctional Center. This is a state facility down in Vienna. Um, here they worked initially on looking at uh, ways to compost the vegetable and fruit waste from a dietary. They, they identified some opportunities to improve uh, recycling at the facility. Then they moved on to looking at some uh, lighting improvements at the facility. And after that, they looked at uh, some systems for converting the bio, uh, uh, vegetable oil grease into biodiesel. And finally, they looked at uh, some feasibility of, uh, of installing a, uh, some solar or wind systems. At, at this project. So again, this particular intern looked at a variety of, worked on a variety of projects. And what we try to do with our projects more and more is we try to quantify the environmental benefits. And, and a lot of companies now are having to report on their greenhouse gas emissions or they have corporate metrics. 
in place. So anytime they do an energy efficiency project, we try to help them calculate the CO2 uh, uh, emission reduction benefits of that project. This is a pretty typical project at a manufacturing facility. This is up in Melrose Park at the Navistar uh, engine plant. Uh, they started out by doing a leak uh, detection and repair uh, project, uh, looking at the compressed air systems, and they actually began uh, tagging and, and repairing the leaks uh, uh, during the intern uh, uh, program and identified some additional cost savings if they go ahead and repair all their leaks. Uh, then they moved on to looking at some uh, upgrades to lighting, uh, both with exit signs and some of the uh, uh, lighting on the manufacturing floor. Uh, again, calculate the uh, benefits and, and the uh, payback periods. Uh, looked at the vending machines, turned off the lights, and then recommend they put in some uh, energy controls. And then looked at the, uh, they had a, lot, a lot of times you go into an industrial facility, they have a lot of uh, personal ventilation fans, and so we'll uh, look at the opportunities to go with some uh, uh, industrial high volume, low speed fans to replace those, those personal fans. And you can see they're pretty significant benefit by, by uh, switching to um, more efficient uh, fans at this facility. Here's a project we did at the University of Illinois at Chicago. This one focused more on lab chemicals and regulated medical and pharmaceutical waste. Here the student looked at some of the major chemical waste streams and recommended some uh, that they install a recycling uh, system uh, to reduce their disposal costs. Um, they were both looking at the labs as well as the hospital. Uh, they recommended some improvements to waste segregation, which is you know, a big issue, uh, trying to avoid having the waste be mixed and being disposed of as hazardous or medical waste. Found some things in the waste stream that could be handled as solid waste. Also suggested a, a program for uh, going to a reusable sharps container management program and then studied some opportunities for uh, reducing uh, their pharmaceutical waste through better inventory uh, methods uh, at the facility. Again, trying to help the facility make the help make the case to implement these projects by calculating the, uh, the economic benefits. Here's a project at a local government facility. It's a city of Olney's wastewater treatment plant. Uh, again, looking at ways to improve the aeration tanks um, also looked at some of the excess biogas that comes off the anaerobic digester and trying to uh, use some of that to replace the natural gas that was, abusing, that was being used in the facility boiler. And then, you know, looking at ways to update the, uh, two of the motors by going to variable speed drives systems. This is Morton Metalcraft, a uh, uh, metal manufacturer, uh, metal uh, Fabricator uh, here nearby here in, Peor uh, in the Peoria area in Morton. This looked at ways to uh, uh, improve some of the processes there by going to counter current rinsing and conductivity meters to uh, reduce their disposal costs, going to some uh, an ultra uh, filtration system on one of their cleaning baths, and then going with a reverse osmosis system on the final rinse tank. Again, this was more of a focus on reducing wastewater discharges and conserving water. And finally, this is, this is an interesting project. I wish we could do more of these. We used to uh, uh, partner with small business development centers that would be funded by, by the state. And, and these centers would uh, have an intern for the summer, and they would take responsibility for marketing and, and placing the intern at small businesses. And, we, um, and, and this, so this really helps, because now you can get an intern out to four or five smaller facilities that probably don't want to have a relationship with Illinois EPA. And so it's easier to work through one of these small business development centers at a community college to help get the student out uh, to some smaller facilities. A lot of these were waste reduction projects. We try to collect information on the program results. And so each year we'll, usually we'll wait a year, year and a half, and we'll survey the facilities that were in the program uh, the previous year. And, uh, and we'll try to collect information on the amount of water it was reduced. Uh, since a lot of our projects have been energy related, we have a, we're starting to compile better data on CO2 reductions, uh, kilowatt hour energy savings, and, and a lot of the dollar savings are from um, reduced energy use or avoided landfill disposal costs and some other uh, uh, you know, housekeeping and other improvements inside the facility. Finally, some lessons learned. Um, 
for a lot of the medium-sized facilities, reduced op operating costs has is, is, is been their primary driving force for implementing the P2 op uh, opportunities that the student identifies. Um, energy use has been the main focus, as many of you know, a lot of utilities in the state have energy rebate, uh, energy efficiency rebate programs, energy prices have been uh, have been going up over the years, so there's been a lot of focus on energy use. And, and of course, now we have a lot of corporations that have climate metrics, so they're looking for energy efficiency opportunities. With a down economy, uh, facilities are sh seeking shorter payback periods. When we started this program, companies would be interested in payback periods of, oh, two to three to five years. And in, in recent years, we've seen that go down to less than one year in some cases. We still see a lot of low-hanging fruit out, uh, out there uh, for, improving, for improving environmental performance. Um, and so there's still a lot of, lot of opportunities um, out there for companies to, to, to begin implementing the recommendations quickly. Um, again, more growing interest, if I mentioned, in calculating CO2 emission reductions from energy efficiency recommendations. And we find that students tend to be most successful at, at, at those companies where uh, they really stress employee cooperation. You have a number of, the, typically a facility that might have a green team where they have multiple departments of staff that are working together to try to, to improve environmental performance. Those are facilities where I think the students have the, the greatest results. For more information, uh, our intern coordinator is here today, Rick Reese. We have a little display with fact sheets uh, out there. And uh, this year we want to uh, get about 15 students in the field. We're going to have funding um, to pay for up to seven students, and those will be available for both public sector and private uh, sector facilities. Um, we're, we want to put more of an em emphasis on waste reduction this year, so we want to reserve those uh, seven EPA paid internships for facilities that are that will be putting more emphasis on waste reduction as opposed to energy efficiency. It's not that we won't look at energy efficiency, but that would be towards the end of the internship. And we're, so we'd be interested in companies that might have a zero waste initiative going on or maybe a product stewardship initiative. So that's where we want to prioritize those intern, those seven intern students that we will pay for uh, using uh, IEPA funds. For the other eight projects, we'll negotiate uh, some kind of a cost sharing arrangement with a facility. Any questions? Yes, in the back. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we'd be willing to work with a facility. I mean, I've done presentations on the program uh, at, at individual facilities or facilities where they might have their EHF officers coming in from around the country and coming to an Illinois plant. But I, I think we'd be interested in coming out to a facility or maybe to a geographic area and we could do some training. We'd probably want to partner with the Illinois Sustainable Technology Center. We used to have... Um, uh, engineers on staff in our regional offices that could go out and do uh, waste reduction and energy efficiency audits. We've lost those staffs to, to budget cuts, but we try to work with the Illinois Sustainable Technology Center on some of their projects. So, you know, I, th I think that's something we might be able to do on a, uh, on maybe on focused in a geographic area, or maybe if, if a company wants to bring their, some of their EHS people together at a particular facility.
Yeah, it's a good it's a good idea. I mean, I, I why don't we talk afterwards and maybe we can we can pull something together. But we used to do an annual pollution prevention conference in the old days, but uh, and we've done some specific sector based uh, workshops, and I know ISTC has done the same thing. And I think you know with budget cuts and losing staff and not being able to replace people and people retiring, it's been tough to sort of maintain some of those those training activities and that doing some of the educational outreach things that we used to do years ago. Yes? Uh, they can go to our website. Oh, the question, how can a student find out uh, more information about the program? Go to our website. Uh, we're now recruiting students. I should have mentioned that. We're in the process of, of uh, actually, the student application period is closed, right, Rick? Um, unfortunately, it's closed, but, but they could go to our website and, and, and get ready for next year. We're, we're going to be starting our interview process, selection process next uh, in early November. The application period for uh, facilities, I think, uh, runs through January 17th. So we're still, and if you've got an idea and you're not sure you want to apply, and you, can, you can do that online. Um, give Rick a call or give me a call and we can talk about the project and, and, and what the opportunities might be. And sometimes Rick will go out to the facility beforehand to help scope things out and help the facility identify some, some projects. Which what we do in terms of recruiting for students is we go to job fairs in the, in the fall. So we'll go to Bradley or we'll go to IIT or over up north to Northern uh, Illinois University and we try to work through some of the, uh, with some of the engineering associations on campus. We also try to work with some of the, uh, uh, the professors as well to get the word out. Uh, we can always use help with that. Thank you. <laughs>